So uh, welcome everyone uh, to lockdown live. I've been asked to call it, not to call it lockdown live, so I'll just call it live today because um, it's obviously an escape from all of that uh, nonsense that we've got at the moment. So uh, yeah, so we've got a uh, beautiful uh, landscape here today. Uh, it's actually snowed overnight. It's sort of, sort of still snowing. It's getting a little bit wet now, the snow, which is a real shame because uh, I was going to head out filming in a bit. Um, but I'm going to bring you some lovely wintry clips today. And uh, yeah, so we're just going to share a few moments. So what we're going to start with. Let's start with the bar now. This actually happened on, on Christmas Eve, I think. Yes, this is a little clip from Christmas Eve. I think some of you may have already said seen this one, but it's a great little moment. Uh, this is Finn, Gilfie's new mate, and a little bit of snow hits him in his eye and then he shakes it off, which is a lovely little clip. And it's these little moments that we're always looking for on the cameras. Uh, so we've got uh, Will and Sam are sorting through all the footage, trying to find these really special moments that we can share with you. Uh, so this is a little bit of snow going in, in, in his eye. So next we're gonna start with Stokes, I think, are we? Yeah, so we're going to have a look at some of the stokes. So some of this footage is literally, I think, is it all, all from this morning? This uh, the one that I'm going to show you now is, yeah. Yeah, yeah, so this, is, this actually happened this morning. Uh, so I came out this morning and I was looking through the snow and straight away I could see these stokes tracks. This stokes has been everywhere. My wife spotted it out of the uh, uh, bedroom window this morning, scampering around just shortly after uh, light this morning. So he's sort of exploring his territory and... Uh, this is one of Bandita's kits. So this is uh, a lovely little clip. A stoat literally just going by this sort of business, going around this territory. And then he bumps into another stoat out there. Here we go. And these two are probably brothers. These are Bandita's kits, I think. And then this is fabulous moment. You can see he's actually just snow plowing through the snow. Nose goes down, and they absolutely love snow. Uh, every time it snows in the morning, they're out clowning around in the snow, literally enjoying themselves. You can see them bouncing around there. And I could see uh, a check in front of every camera, being careful not to leave any footsteps myself. Uh, and I saw all of this action, and I just wished it was slightly closer to camera. Uh, sometimes we do capture these amazing moments. Here he's just coming through, but if all that snow plowing action went on and nearer to the camera that would have been absolute gold but it's a lovely little lovely little moment that we're sharing with you there um yeah stokes on the wall yeah stokes on the wall next so that's the wall behind us um we're filming from just outside the hide and um, this is i think this is bill again in the snow and this was uh, shot a few days ago i think this is on christmas eve as well christmas eve christmas eve stoked so uh, yeah, Will was going to have a day off on Christmas Eve and <laughs> it snowed and we're doing a, a piece for the one show on snow at the moment. So uh, I said, Will, <laughs> <laughs> come and give us a hand. So I was filming this stout and then we did a few uh, sort of introduction pieces to camera and things uh, around the place that day. But we've got lo this lovely uh, shot of him where they come and feed. And you can see how powerful they are there. You're just pulling the food away tugging and they, when they actually eat they often twist um, you know if a stoat bites you what they tend to do is then twist twist their uh, neck and that's what they do when they catch prey as well so they can easily bamboozle quite dangerous prey items like a rat or a squirrel which have a very very uh, severe bite but the stoats can manage uh, to catch grey squirrels and rats by actually um, you know they, they catch them and then they spin and flick and this actually confuses the prey completely uh, and they just deliver that incredible bite to the uh, back of the head and uh, they have themselves a dinner. But these are animals I've been studying for years. I absolutely love watching the stoats. They're full of character, full of fun, full of mischief and uh, super predators. And I like filming them sometimes in slow motion and sometimes you can imagine these animals, you know, if they were four foot long, We'd be in a lot of danger, you know, it's just incredible uh, to watch them going about their territory. Yes, yeah, so that's Bill, I think, about looking by the markings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, it's a super little step. So we'll move on to what we're going to move on to next, Well, What have we been up to this, mo this morning? This morning, yeah, we've been very busy this morning uh, filming. 
So we've uh, been filming Wrens and Robins this morning because we like to bring, you know, the more unusual, difficult subjects like the um, stoats and the owls, the kestrels. Uh, but we also like to bring uh, to you some actually very ordinary birds like wrens and robins and uh, try and film them, you know, in a little bit more of an intimate way, trying to get some special angles on these uh, little creatures. So these are wrens and robins I feed in the porch as soon as I put my boots on outside. Uh, when I head out, I've got literally a queue of uh, birds. I look after some of the smallest morning. birds in the gardens, the wrens, and I have a special place where I feed them. And in the summer, they actually nest in this porch too, which is absolutely wonderful to see. Talks through what we're seeing here. Yeah, yes, yeah, so this is one of the little wrens queuing up. Uh, I've got at least a pair of wrens. They actually nest in the porch, they roost in the porch, uh, and they actually, uh, you know, as soon as we walk out in the morning, they're there waiting for us. They're chattering away because uh, I feed them mealworms and mealworms are very special food for them uh, at this time of year. The insect life is quite difficult to find so this, the, uh, they are really really pleased to see me on the morning and any time we walk by one of them saw Will the other day and uh, was politely asking him if he knew where the <laughs> mealworms were and poor Will didn't know that inside information and uh, I was actually up on the feeding tower and the wren had flown nearly 60 metres to come and see me at the feeding tower and he said, you know, I've asked Will where the mealworms are but he doesn't know, um, can you help me out? So I had to go back around and uh, feed the wrens but these are real characters, I absolutely love filming them. Uh, and it's a very ordinary everyday bird and we've been using the, uh, the Osmo on there this morning as well, the little Osmo pocket to try and film some slow motion footage as well which we can bring you got the wren. I don't know if you can hear chattering in the background now. Probably a little bit across with us because the uh, mealworm supplies run out again. They actually come and see us uh, and uh, want, want us to go back around that way to take them some food round. So he's having a little chatter down there. There might even be a stoat around because I've heard blackbirds alarm calling down the hedge as well. Yeah, blue tit alarm calling as well. So there's probably a stoat coming up in this area somewhere. So we'll head back inside in a minute and hopefully uh, get back to filming this wildlife and, uh, and the wrens. But if there's any questions sort of coming in, I'll answer any questions next. Uh, so send your questions in. And, uh, we do I'll... have a first question. Oh, I've got one already. So one person is asking, as we've seen some of the stoats, how many of Bandita's kits we think we might still be seeing? I thought there was uh, two left, a male and a female, but we've just proved this morning we've got another male out there, so the females are much smaller. Um, so we've got a, two males and a, a female left at the moment, and then Bandita, who we haven't seen yet today. So uh, hopefully she'll make an appearance this afternoon. She's, uh, I know where her nest is, so I've been watching her nest at the moment. She's actually living in an old rat hole, and um, one really good thing about having the two males here, Bandita is a little bit cautious of taking on rats, uh, but in the garden uh, the two males have literally more or less cleared all the rats out of the garden uh, and down at the stoat trough habitat uh, the, sto the rats have disappeared from there and I presume that's just the stoats that have driven them out which is a really good sign, but it takes a, a good male stoat with a lot of attitude to do this, uh, the female stoats uh, especially Bandita, she, she knows how dangerous they are, she will take them on sometimes, but a full grown rat is absolutely formidable uh, to take down for a, you know, a stoat that's actually lighter in body weight. Um, so yeah, so what other questions have we got? We've got, do owls hunt stoats? Oh, yes. So we've had, um, we've had a lot of interaction, should we call it, in between stoats and owls, but you've, you've obviously seen the live feed on an evening, We've got them feeding alongside each other, and there is um, there is interaction between them. Uh, and um, sometimes the stoats have the upper hand, and sometimes the owls have the upper hand. I've seen uh, the, the tawny owl bomber actually pick a stoat up and carry it away down the valley, uh, but within minutes, uh, less than six, seven minutes, that stoat was back here. Uh, but it literally just flew off into the darkness with it. And uh, I've been caught, you know, when I've been going too close to the nest to do um, surrogate chicks in, I've been caught by 
the owl's bomber uh, and it really hurts. Um, you know, I've had infections in my head and neck, um, so they, they do really hurt when they hit you, but they, the stoats are so agile, and again, when they're caught by the owls, what they tend to do is to do this spinning. Uh, so as the owl grabs them, they'll spin uh, and try and flick the owl off, uh, and also then spray them with a really nasty smell, um, so uh, like a skunk does. So uh, yeah, yeah, there, there is interaction between them. We have found, um, my daughter found a weasel, skull uh, in an owl pellet before and that was a barn owl pellet and they can more or less swallow a, a female weasel down whole so uh, but we haven't had any fatalities if you watch bandita really closely she's got nicks in her ear uh, two of those uh, nicks were done by her daughter and one of those nicks was done by bomber the tawny owl so he he grabbed uh, bandita just down by the wall here the edge of the wall uh, and actually uh, um, delivered quite a nasty wound to her head and split her ear. So uh, yeah, they don't get on always, but uh, we obviously see a lot of interaction on the live cameras. The next question was, do stoats get cold? Yes, very, very, very good question. So uh, stoats body shape is a little bit like a cucumber basically. And that's one of their, that's one of their downfalls in a way. Um, they live in very cold environments. Uh, they have very good fur, um, very thick fur in winter especially, but that is one of their downfalls because of their body shape. Um, the longer, the thinner their animal, the more heat they lose. So if you get a very squat animal, uh, like a rabbit, you know, if a rabbit sits all hunched up, um, there's, less, there's less surface area for the body size. So uh, some, some animals can cope with it better, but the shape of the stoat basically means that that's one of the problems they have and that's the same with animals like uh, mink as well uh, all of those mustelids they have uh, long thin bodies and if we've got we've got some footage i wish we could have uh, had this question before but bandita she will actually coil, coil herself up in the nest and um, uh, and she can make a little a footprint when she curls in a perfect circle about this big quite incredible she tucks herself in and it is literally a perfect circle uh, so we've got her in a Roman coat doing that in one of the nests here behind us. Next question is, have we seen Whisper and Stuart since their release? No, nah, little bits early on, but they've obviously obviously dispersed by now. Um, and we were surrounded, literally surrounded by this wonderful countryside. So uh, we've got one of Bandita's female kits here. Stoats are territorial. Uh, the kits are still here, but uh, Whisper and Stuart, they stayed. We saw them for about two, two, three weeks, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, on and off, little yeah, bits. Yeah, yeah, but at the moment, uh, at this, this sort of nature, I mean, they've got literally all of this landscape to go out. I thought they would keep, keep coming back for food. They held up in the, uh, the old sort of badger set for quite a while uh, and bobbed back for food. But then they can just decide, literally, just to go one day once they learn how to hunt and things. Um, next question is, uh, Carol asks, uh, she's uh, watching on Facebook, do you clean owl boxes out? Oh, depends what's in them. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, it depends on the size of the owl box and depends what's in them. So what owls need, they don't carry any nesting material, so what they actually do definitely need is about this much of debris on the bottom of the box, and usually uh, that's like old owl pellets. Uh, which is ideal, or just wood um, chippings, um, very you know fine wood chippings. Uh, I sometimes use the stuff when I've been chainsawing, uh, that sort of size. You don't want anything too big in there. Um, so, so yes, to a point. But if you've got an owl box that isn't massive and you've got about this much owl pellets in there, yes, it does need cleaning out. And if you have animals like jackdaws filling it with sticks. Um, squirrels filling it with squirrel dray material all of the branches what they don't like is a load of twigs and branches in there they like um, if you watch the owls on the live stream they love making a nice nest scrape to lay their eggs in and if there's loads of twigs and branches in there they get frustrated so that's jackdaws are the main culprit for that uh, and sometimes uh, stock doves will make nests in there as well um, I think we've got one more question here is do you think ghost is an older owl Oh gosh, <laughs> we've literally got owl confusion here <laughs> because we have so many owls uh, coming in, coming into here. 
uh, and it's literally it is so difficult to say. Uh, some of the owls, uh, when we've had owls breeding here, they've not been rung every year, uh, and I kind of wish they were. We need little identify, little name badges on them all. Uh, but it's quite possible. Uh, owls and barn owls in the wild are not a long-lived uh, bird in general. In captivity, you can certainly get them into the high teens. Um, uh, but with uh, wild owls, you're looking at sort of under three years for a, a wild owl. But because we have wild owls living here and they come here when times get hard, like uh, the weather like it is at the moment, uh, they can get through these difficult periods uh, and they will live longer here. We had a kestrel lived here, a male kestrel, he lived uh, until he was 13, um, the original Mr. Kes. Uh, so he was 13 years old before he uh, disappeared. Um, so that's a good, long, very, very good long life for a kestrel. And that's it for today. Yeah, so that's it for today. So thank you for joining us and we'll be back with you Tuesday. I'm not quite going to say uh, what we're going to bring because I don't know what <laughs> our weather's going to bring. So we're going to do paintings today. If the weather's uh, just a little bit normal, we'll, we'll probably bring you some sort of news on paintings and we'll probably do uh, uh, a live uh, about Bandita and that wonderful process of her uh, going from brown to ermine but if anyone else has any suggestions we can uh, look at those as well but thanks everyone for joining us and we'll see you tuesday